welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. I keep thinking we're going to run out of subjects to talk about soon, but they just keep popping up. In today's session, we're going to talk about the dilemma that my wife has when she goes handbag shopping. Not exactly, but the problem that I've landed you guys in is exactly the problem that she has to face when she does what I've just described. Let me try and explain that a little bit better for you. Now, whether it's this machine now, with this new head on, or my old light blade machine over there, which has exactly the same lens tube system in it. And I have to say that I really didn't appreciate how much I was living in the dark with these lenses, lens tubes, and nozzles until I started doing research into this head using this nozzle and lens system. And then all of a sudden, it turns out that there is a whole new world out there which I had never discovered or realised. Now it wasn't life simple when the only decision I had to make is what cereal I'm going to have for breakfast. Same sort of problem that I had here with my light blade machine. Look, I had a two inch lens tube with a four inch in the back. I had a two and a half inch lens tube with a four inch in the back. And I had one nozzle. That was it. And I had a choice of a four inch lens, a two and a half inch lens, or a two inch lens. Well, those mathematicians amongst you will certainly realize that there aren't many combinations that I can make with that. But with only two things to do on this machine, cutting and engraving, the matrix array was not very big. Yeah, we had got air assist as a variable as well, but in the main, we'd only got these very few factors here to play with when making a decision about the parameters and the mechanical setup for our job. And on this machine, the situation was even simpler. I had my machine with a 38.1, an inch and a half lens. It was sitting down here, inside the nozzle. So I was rather limited in what I could poke out of this nozzle. As I said, my life started off with a 38.1. Everybody else that I know of that was supplied with one of these machines had a two inch lens. But whatever it was, this or this, the choice was very simple. None. A lot of people learnt that I had a 38.1 lens and fitted a 38.1 lens to their machine. And I, vice versa, found out that other people were fitted with a 2 inch lens, so I got a 2 inch lens for this. And while I was about it, I also bought myself a 2.5 inch lens. There was no point in having a 4 inch lens because the 4 inch lens was so close to this nozzle here that most of the beam would have been captured inside here and only a very small amount would have come out. So the best that I could deal with with this particular setup was one nozzle, three lenses. Okay, a little less confusing than the light blade combination. Well, technically, with this head here, we've got exactly the same situation that we've got in the light blade machine. Whereas I said, there weren't, there weren't too many combinations to look at. What I've come to realize is that this rather limiting nozzle that we have on the light blade machine, which has got a two and a half millimeter orifice in the end, it's good for cutting and it works extremely well for engraving, but it tends to clog up and get horrible debris on the end. Most people just tolerate that. But of course, there are other machines out on the market there, like the K40 machine has got a two inch lens sitting in a very stubby nozzle. So the distance between the work and the nozzle is large and they don't have air assist either. And everybody's very, very happy with the engraving quality that comes off of a K40 machine. And when they jump to one of these machines, they start moaning and groaning that they can't get the same quality of work off this machine. What we haven't done is understand the difference between the K40 and these machines. Now on the light blade machine that uses this lens tube system, we have a choice of two lens tubes only. And they're shown on this drawing very clearly. You've got two and a half and four inch and two inch 
and four inch. And you can see the difference when you look across here. These are two and a half and all the rest are two inch lens holders, lens tubes, should I say. They are actually lens holders because the lens is encapsulated in the lens tube itself. Whereas with this machine originally, the lens was captivated in the nozzle. The first combination is two lens tubes, a two inch and a two and a half inch. Now, as I said, I was happily laboring under the um, apprehension that with one nozzle and a small combination of lenses, I could conquer the universe and do anything I like with this machine. Well, it turns out that the guys that upgrade to these machines from a K40 are not overly happy with the engraving performance. And that's because we're supplied with one of these nozzles, which is a, a long nozzle. And this nozzle is only really suitable for doing cutting work. Now I know we've been doing engraving work with it for a long time now, but it's not the ideal tool for doing engraving work. If we look carefully at this particular nozzle, you probably might see in the end here, a whole load of white stuff that has collected in there from some engraving that I've done with that particular nozzle. And that's the problem. The nozzle tends to clog up and you get stuff around the outside here as well, building up sticky stuff. So the reason why the guys from K40 Group love their machines for engraving is because they have got this configuration here. They have got a long distance between their work and their nozzle. Whereas we've been laboring under the apprehension that we have to work with a short distance between our nozzle and our work. Because all the lenses are designed to fit into these lens tubes and finish up with four, five, six millimeter gap. And a six millimeter gap, anything up to a six millimeter gap is absolutely perfect for focusing the air through this very small nozzle down into the cut to give us a great quality cut. As I said, it works for engraving, but the problem is, if you put too much air through here, because it's so close to the work, you will paint your work brown. So you have to be very, very careful to almost turn the air assist off so that you don't get that effect. Whereas when you get a long distance between your nozzle and your work, it's easy. So in this real world, we have two types of requirement. We've got cutting requirement, short distance, small nozzle, and we've got engraving requirement, which is long distance, the hole in the end of the nozzle has to be bigger to, to, to allow the much bigger beam to pass through. So that automatically means that if we've got a bigger hole and we put air assist in there, even if we put quite a lot of air assist, we're not going to get a very good high velocity flow through there. It's going to dribble out the end there and give us lens protection, which is basically all we're really after when it comes to engraving. The only problem is that these nozzles at the moment just do not exist. We can get this nozzle, and it's a very short nozzle, so that the beam can actually project just outside the end of the nozzle and give you a five or six millimetre distance, which is fine for cutting and okay for engraving. So before I realised that existed, I'd already sorted myself out with a modified long nozzle so that my lens actually fitted right down inside the nozzle here. And on my light blade machine, I was using a one and a half inch lens, as well as the two inch, the two and a half, and the four inch combination that I was supplied with. So I had A, B, and C, and effectively with my 18 millimeter one and a half inch lens, I was able to also have L on the light blade machine. So rather than have a nozzle here, which is basically a cutting nozzle that doubles up as a possible poor engraving nozzle, um, I decided to make a uh, a standard engraving nozzle and I did that by taking the standard short nozzle and modifying it so that it had a large hole in the bottom. I started work on this one here which basically is my compound lens nozzle and as I was working on this what I found was that I needed to put a very deep seat inside this standard nozzle and I could use this standard nozzle with that deep seat in to, ho to house the compound lens assembly. Although this has just got a machined bore in it and 
to test the assembly what I have to do is put my lenses in there and then keep them in place with an o-ring on top squeezed in to, to lock them in. In reality what I'm trying to get done is to have this standard compound lens nozzle as an all-encompassing engraving nozzle and the plan to achieve that is to do something very similar to what's been done here in my original China Blue nozzle. We put a thread inside here and we put a screw to clamp the lens. Now that means that we've got a combination lens which will take a two inch lens if you really want it for engraving and you say well why would I want a two inch lens for engraving? Well you can have a two or a two and a half inch lens when you're doing 3D engraving for example. If you want to do standard engraving with a one and a half inch lens that's fine. If you want to do dot engraving with photo engraving then maybe a one inch lens will fit in here now and also the compound lens will fit in there now. So this as a lens assembly like this works for all these 18 millimeter diameter lenses two inch one and a half one and a compound lens which we will have to talk about at a later date in addition to that if you leave that clamp ring out you can use this same nozzle for doing a one and a half inch a two inch a two and a half and a four inch standard 20 millimeter lens for engraving. So now as you can see we're, we're throwing hundreds of options into the mix. Well we haven't quite got to hundreds yet but we're certainly up into the tens because we've got two lens sizes, two types of body, three types of nozzle now and of course we've got two types of lens plano convex and meniscus and for each of those we've got four inch, two and a half, two, one and a half and a one inch. In addition we've got all sorts of compound lens assemblies that we can play with. So now as you can see we've got we've got the handbag dilemma. What on earth do I choose? <laughs> okay now these are the interesting ones when you're trying to produce something that was never really intended i.e. something that's suitable for cutting because the distance is not too far from the work and the effect of the small orifice blowing a jet of concentrated air into the kerf is still effective but at the same time the it, when you're doing engraving and there is sufficient gap between the work and the nozzle for the cross flow of air to carry most of the debris away before it has a chance to come back and hit the nozzle neither is perfect but it's a reasonable compromise how do we achieve that well I'm trying to persuade you guys that you shouldn't be frightened of this assembly in any way at all. Even though these are designed as two and a half inch and two inch with their seatings in the back, you can play tricks with these. Here I've got a two and a half inch lens tube and I'm putting one of the, the lens rings in the back there. To pull the lens forward what we're going to do is I'm going to drop an o-ring in the back I'm going to put my lens on top of the o-ring and then I'm going to put my nozzle and clamp the lens with the nozzle. Okay so I've got a spare ring if I want to play a different game I might want to use this as a clamp ring and push it further back but in this particular instance I'm trying to pull the lens as far forward as possible to produce the focal point as far away from the nozzle as possible. Let's just see what we've achieved. This is a two inch focal length lens in here. Now I've got a soft q-tip here, plastic, so I'm not going to damage the lens and I'm going to poke that inside there until it touches the lens. So we've got about 36 millimeters of beam inside the nozzle. Well this is a 50 millimeter, a 51 millimeter lens. So therefore we've got about 15 millimeters gap at the front here now and that's great for engraving. If we want to reduce it slightly all we've got to do is put the o-ring in front of the lens and we can pull the lens back by 
three millimeters and we can reduce the gap to 12. Now I think when you look at these pictures you will probably understand that there were certain design constraints that forced the engineers to say well we're going to sit this lens against a backstop and then we're going to design this lens here so that we've got that much sticking out the front. Those were the design constraints when they designed them. That doesn't mean to say they understood what they were actually trying to do with these various lenses. We can play with the rules a little bit. We can be flexible with the way that we mount our lens inside the tube. We can vary the amount that sticks out the front for different applications. Go forth, be adventurous. The rules are there to be broken. Now, as far as this new short universal engraving nozzle is concerned, this is something that I have made and adapted. Now, some of you guys will have kit that can do the same thing. Many of you won't, and you will want to buy this from somewhere. Now, I'm not the person to buy it from, because first of all, I haven't got any screw threading equipment to put screw threads in these pieces. And so I've been speaking to Cloudray, who are interested in making this nozzle assembly as a standard part that they can sell to you and maybe even to the factories. I'm not worried in the least bit about any copyright or design issues, so I just want to make it as simple and as easy for you guys to benefit in the same way from this nozzle and this compound lens assembly. So, at a very reasonable price, you will be able to buy a standard engraving nozzle. But not only is it a standard engraving nozzle, it will also be the possibility of a compound lens system as well and you won't be paying $450 for it. And it will do what it says on my tin. So I'm currently waiting for a prototype to be delivered to me and I will then be able to test this assembly and show you what it does. And we'll see what combination of lenses give excellent results. Now I know already that I can get some excellent results from a one inch lens. It may well be that we require a special combination of not only the lens shape but also the lens material to get what I'm looking for out of this compound lens system. What I plan to try and do is over the next few weeks I want to try and build a matrix up which gives you a bit of a clue as to what the best use for this lens will be which appears to be cutting. Maybe these some of these lenses here are good not only for photo engraving you know, maybe this one's not particularly good because it's a two inch lens. This one will probably be okay up to maybe 127 dots per inch. The one inch lens there, well, that's possible. You may well be able to get to up to 200 dots per inch with that. And I'm hopeful with the compound lens, you may be able to get to 254 or even beyond that when I finalize the figures on it. But it would be nice to have a big reference chart which helped me decide which of these would be the best combination to use for any particular job. Now what I've done with all these pictures, I've reduced the beam size to about an eight millimeter diameter beam. Um, that way I can make a reasonable attempt at finding out how the beam passes through the nozzle itself. And in all cases, I don't have a problem. So you'll have to keep your eyes open on the Cloudray website to find out when this universal nozzle and compound lens uh, is going to be available. It will not be available with a standard fitting on it. It's not possible to get that standard fitting below the lens seat. So consequently, it will have a piece of four millimeter tube supplied with it, which will fit in the side of the nozzle. It's a press fit in the side of the nozzle. Now, a press fit in the side of the nozzle is no different to a press fit into a fitting except that the fitting locks in and you have to fight to get it out whereas this one although it's in there pretty tight as you can see you will be able to pull it out because it relies on the compliance of this polyurethane tube so if at any stage this tube gets too loose for you just cut the end off and it will be a super snug fit back in there again. So the existing air assist pipe on your machine will be six millimeter diameter with a four millimeter bore. And this just plugs into that bore. If you've got your little air assist 
regulator on the side here you can still plug that in there like that so I normally tend to keep a piece of six millimeter pipe plugged on the end there already as an adapter well I hope I've clarified rather than confused you even more yes we've got a huge number of combinations now of nozzles lens tubes lens types meniscus plano convex lens materials ZNSE, gallium arsenide and focal lengths permutate that lot together with air assist or no air assist a lot of air assist a little air assist oh, it makes your head hurt doesn't it so it was true ignorance was bliss and knowledge could well be a burden so thanks for taking the time to be confused and I'll catch up with you in the next session. Until then, cheerio.